Well guys, this is it. We've pretty much reached the end of this series and my very last video, my very last chance to throw out some theories, predictions, etc. before this show and season ends because even though a season two is going to happen, it won't be exactly like this one. It's not like your typical series. So I have a lot to talk to you about. So overall, I thought that last or this week's last night's episode was important basically because we found out some much needed information about Pete and we also found out some information about Gigi. It wasn't the most fabulous episode of the series in my opinion or of the season, but I think they wanted to give us some background information. So the Chanel's decide that the Dean is the Red Devil and honestly I feel like this is just one big distraction. I don't feel like the Dean is going to end up being involved in all of this Red Devil stuff. If there is like a Red Devil team, I don't think she's going to play a role in that. But I think this episode was used to kind of throw viewers off to make them think, well, maybe she is the Red Devil, but I'm totally not buying into that. But the Chanel's decide that they need to kill her to stop her from killing other people. So this episode was called Black Friday and it confused me just a little bit because I thought most of it would take place like in a shopping mall, but actually the Black Friday part of this episode was pretty insignificant compared to the rest of the episode. But anyway, um, the Chanel's do get locked in a mall and the Red Devil shows up and he has like one of those crossbow things. Um, and Chanel number one ends up being like alone with this person and it kind of really scared me because the Red Devil shot her like in the shoulder area. Um, and for a second I thought, well, are they going to try to kill her off? I honestly think Chanel number one will survive through the entire season and go on to next season. Um, but then I started thinking, I really don't think that she is going to be killed off. So I'm glad that she survived, even though she is kind of annoying. Um, and kind of, I'm putting that lightly. But sadly, a police officer did die. And we learned that Denise is the chief of police now. As much as I love her and think she's hilarious, I find her timing a little weird that she got there just in time to save Chanel. And we all know she kind of has a motive as to why she could be involved with the Red Devil activity. So I'm still suspicious of her as I have always been. So Boone left a will, and to be honest, I'm not really sure if he wrote it, or maybe he wrote it thinking that everyone still thought that he was gay because a lot of the stuff in it didn't really add up to the true Boone that we ended up learning in this series, but he left a lot of his stuff to Pete. Now this is kind of difficult to figure out, but I will tell you when I give you my theory at the end of this video why I think the two of them are connected. Um, Pete didn't seem to know, but I do think he really does know because I actually think They've kind of been working together. And let me tell you up front, no, I do not think that Pete is the killer or the Red Devil that we've been wanting to know who that is all season. Um, but I think he plays a role in this, which I will explain in just a little bit. We did learn some background information right here about Pete because we learned that he wanted to be a part of the Dickie Dollar Scholars, but he was rejected. Now, it might just be because he doesn't play golf or you might think that, but really they didn't think he was cool enough to be part of the fraternity. And this is a person who's been rejected a lot. You saw that Chanel number one rejected him when he kind of had a crush on her maybe last year. He's kind of an underdog, and I think the theme of this show is underdogs taking revenge on the popular preppy people, which plays into the theory that I have developed after watching this week's episode, which we will get to. Um, the interesting thing is I think that Pete will be murdered. That was foreshadowed by Chad, who said that Pete... You know, Pete Martinez, I think he was like, you're going to be murdered. I definitely think we're going to see that happen in the finale, and I think that was just the show's way of foreshadowing that event. So the Chanel's decide the way they're going to kill the Dean is to poison her. So Chanel, Juan, and Grace take over some poison apple cider because they find out on Facebook that apple cider is her fave drink. She drinks the entire drink. She absolutely loves it, and nothing happens to her. So obviously, someone has tipped her off. I would say that one of the Chanel's is working with the Dean to let her know that the other Chanel's are trying to kill her. At this point, my suspect for that is Zayday. That doesn't mean that I think both of them are the Red Devils. I definitely don't, but I think someone is just looking out for the Dean. So after Grace tells Pete of her plans to kill the Dean, he becomes very upset and he's like, you know what, Grace, you're not a killer. You're too good for this. And then she reconsiders and decides she doesn't want anything to do with this. Now, I will be honest that going into this episode, I 100% thought that Grace was our missing Red Devil. All the signs have basically been there. This episode, I changed my mind just a little bit, but I still feel like she will be involved. It will make me very happy if she ends up being the Red Devil that 
will be unmasked in the finale. Um, it makes a lot of sense if you've seen the Scream franchise of movies. The killer in the last one ended up being Emma Roberts' character, who actually also had the same name as Grace in the movie, and it was the good girl who no one suspected, kind of like what we have here with Grace. Um, although I could see it going a little bit different, uh, a little different way, which I will explain. Stay tuned. I'm going to give you the good stuff at the end of this video. Anyway, so Pete has been hanging out with Grace's dad. Now, I felt like this was very strange, which made me develop, or which was part of the reason for me developing kind of a new theory, because Grace goes to visit her dad and finds out that Pete is already there, and it seems like they kind of know each other beyond just the fact that he's dating um, his daughter. So that was very suspicious to me. They've been doing some investigating on Gigi, and found out that Gigi actually wasn't a part of Kappa. It was her sister who was raising the babies, but everything made her crazy and she ended up killing herself. So that makes Gigi's motive really clear and I'm glad that they kind of made all that look, you know, be clear to us as to why Gigi was out for revenge. So the Chanel's decide the next way that they will try to murder the Dean is to freeze her to death, but when they take her to one of those cryo, cryogenic, or however you say it, places, um, it doesn't work and she actually thinks it's like one of the best experiences of her life. So then, then again, you have to understand that someone is tipping her off, especially her reaction to the different ways that she's tried to uh, be murdered. She is like loving the attempts, like she loved the drink, she loved this freezer thing and <laughs> you can just tell that she's kind of playing it out because she knows they were actually trying to kill her. So the big bombshell in this episode is we find out that Pete has indeed killed someone in that Red Devil outfit. My idea is that he was the Red Devil in the mall and that he killed a police officer. Now I don't know if he's killed more people than this but he is definitely a murderer and he admits it to Grace who does appear to be shocked. So he gets a phone call, which is the other big part of this episode, and he's telling this person that he doesn't want this person to contact him again. Basically, he's done with all this, and you have to believe that this person, which I believe anyway, is the true ringleader of the Red Devil operation. We always thought that Gigi was, but I don't believe that anymore. Um, yes, I do believe we are owed the reveal of a twin sister, Boone's twin sister, but I don't necessarily believe that the twin sister is a murderer. I could see the twin sister being one of the Chanel's. Maybe they don't even... Maybe, I don't even know if they realize that they're the twin, and if they do, I'm not so sure they were out killing people. So, um, here's the theory that I have come up with. If you have read some of the interviews that Ryan Murphy has been doing recently, he said that once you find out who the RD is, it's really simple. It really makes all the sense in the world. So, sometimes I feel like we try to overthink this show and come up with really far-fetched theories. I don't think the show is going to go that way. I think that Wes, who is Grace's father, has been the ringleader of this operation, um, and I think he's had it planned for some time. I actually think he hired Gigi, and I think he hired Pete. He hired Pete to look over his daughter because he didn't want her to join a sorority. I mean, that's the reason that her dad moved there and took a job there to watch over her. And since he hired Pete, um, Pete was set up, you know, to also take, he, he was able to use Pete and manipulate him in a way because Pete was someone who had been let down by people and Chanel number one thought he was crazy, the fraternity wouldn't accept him. No one really liked Pete there at the school so Wes took, used that to his advantage and he was able to manipulate him into doing his work, his dirty work for him. So perhaps he's killed some people for him, I don't know, but I think he's come to his senses because he realizes he's in love with Grace and he doesn't want to be a killer anymore and she knows she deserves better and he doesn't want this type of life anymore. So I do believe he was talking to Wes on the phone telling him he didn't want to be a part of this anymore. I think they were definitely both working with Gigi. I really do. I think that they brought her into all this knowing that she also had a motive and she wanted to get revenge. It also makes me suspicious of Denise because she has the same type of motive where she was rejected from the Kappas. So I could see them also bringing her into this scenario and maybe the reveal that she's somehow involved. Again, I think the main theme of this story is to getting revenge and the people who felt like they've been wronged in the past were taking it out on those who did this to them. And even though these people in the sorority and fraternities didn't really affect people in the past, they're still a symbol of those people who, you know, destroyed the life of Wes's first wife, Grace's mom. So on an, on the on a side note here, I definitely think I definitely would be happy if Grace was revealed as the RD. After the episode this week, I started to rethink. And I really don't think that she is a part of this. But on, on the other hand, after reading a lot of your comments, I could also definitely see her being the RD. 
I don't know how all this is going to fit together, but my theory with Wes being the ringleader and hiring these people, it really seems simple. It has, everyone has a clear motive and it makes complete sense. I do understand Grace's motive for wanting to avenge her mother's death. Maybe the sorority made her get involved in drugs and alcohol, which ended up and her losing her life, but the other people to me have much clearer motives. So I would love to know what you think. If you agree with me, thumbs up. If you don't agree with me, thumbs up and tell me below what your theory is and why I should believe your theory. A lot of you have asked me who I think will survive because, you know, we've heard different rumors. So I'm just going to go with four people surviving. It could be more, it could be less, but I would love to see Chanel number one survive, Grace survive, um, Denise survive and Chad Radwell. I don't see any reason why Chad Radwell will be killed and I love his character. So I definitely think that Emma Roberts will survive on to the next season. I don't really know what they're going to do with the Dean. I could see them going either way. I could definitely see her being killed or since she's a huge um, name for the show, a huge actress, I could see her being a part of the next season. So um, I would love for you to comment with your theory if you haven't done that before or if you're new here. This is basically your last chance these next few days before the finale airs to let me know what you think and let's see if you are right. That would be so awesome if any of you are right. Honestly, why don't we just do this? Um, if any of you can, the person who you think is the RD who will be unmasked, you tell me who that is and I will put all of those people who get that correct into a random number generator and I will send one of you a prize, okay? I haven't decided what that prize is yet because I literally just thought of this, but I promise it'll be nice. So again, you have to tell me that you're entering the contest, so you need to be subscribed to my channel to enter and then make a comment saying the RD who is unmasked will be and that person's name. This could go a lot of different ways, but we saw that in the promo that the person's going to be unmasked. So even though they may not be the main ringleader, or there may be multiple RDs, the one in the promo where like Zayday and the Chanel's are screaming, that's the one I'm talking about. Whoever you think that is, if you get that correct, all your names go into random number generator. And this is also open internationally. All right, so good luck. Uh, but anyway, I think that's all the time we have for this. I'm just super, super, super excited about the finale. And I love you guys. I love you for being part of the Scream Queen's journey with me. And I will see you next week. Bye, guys. Die young bad girls, give it what